only that a person has a past that is dark. When he comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, he has a present that is, by the way, attached to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is secure in his now. And then the Bible says, even in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. Wow, that is a beautiful future ahead. And then Paul is saying, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. He emphasized that. He made sure that people understand that he could never ever be saved. He made sure that people understand that they are in darkness. They are already uh, uh, doomed uh, for destruction. And, and, uh, and that's it. No hope. And yet Jesus Christ came and that is called grace. And that is why he said that. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not by work so that no one can boast. It has to be very clear. Man cannot do anything to save himself. It has to be something from God, and it is called grace. Now, after verse 9, we go to verse 10. And here is verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What is first? The call for the lost to be found. Salvation. What is second? The call for the found to do good works, that is, to serve and be of service in doing good to others. The sinner who trusts Christ has been raised and seated on the throne. What a miracle of God's grace. We are taken out of the great graveyard of sin and placed into the throne room of glory. And now here we are discussing this idea the idea of the Lord, we are called to be great, and that is the call to become a servant. In Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship, we are God's masterpiece. We are the workings of God. It is not our workings that we are saved. It was He who came and did His work, and we became His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, trivia question. What do Abraham, Moses, Jacob, Gideon, the 12 apostles, and Paul have in common before they met God and were used by God? Anong common sa ila? The answer is, all of them have messed up lives and were nobodies. They were nobodies. Ang ila kabuhi sa pagkalain kalibagon nga pagpangabuhi indi amo bisan nano nila nga tinguha indi sila makalabot bisan nano nila nga pagtilaw indi sila makatuman bisan nano nila nga himo san dapat nila nga himuon indi sila makacycle they could not even just uh, know and understand the meaning and the cycle and the, the purpose of life they were just messed up people until one day god came into their lives and something happened but definitely they were nobodies. Definitely, they were messed up people. Noah was a drunk that God used. And next Sunday, Lolo Noah will be celebrated together with his ark, with our children here. Can you just imagine? But he was a drunkard, yet used by God. Abraham was a chronic liar that God used. Sarah was a liar and laughed at God's promise, yet God used her. Jacob was a manipulator and liar, yet God used, God used him. Moses was a murderer and had a problem with anger, yet God used him. Rahab was a prostitute and a liar, yet God used her. And not only that, she even became part of the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Samson was in essence a sex addict. And yet still God used him. David was an adulterer, a murderer, and not so great father. And yet God used him. Jonah was a reluctant servant who had bitterness issues with and through a temper tantrum. But yet God still used him. Not once. God even used him two times. The second time around. Second chance usage. He gave up. 
He does not want it anymore. He rejected the call. But here God would say, no, 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 no. This is for you. This is your destiny. This has been designed for you. Now you obey. And of course he did. 